talk advice for new ICU nurses. So tip number one, learn how to be assertive. Being around ICU nurses and critical care physicians can be intimidating, okay? One of the things that is the nature of that environment is that things get very serious very quickly. You can go from laughing and joking around in the nurse's station one moment, and then two seconds later, someone is dying 10 feet away from you, and it's your job along with your colleagues to help save that person's life. Um, and I say that not to exaggerate, but that truly is the environment. So you can go from this like cordial back and forth joking to someone saying, get me this, do this, what was this? And it um, can be a little jarring to be around if you've never been around people that do that before. Um, it's almost military-like with the communication style because it is in the middle of an active emergency. So it's important to also get just used to that. Um, and also learning the line of what is what is okay for how people can talk to me and what's crossing the line. So assertiveness is a really crucial skill to learn in ICU um, nursing because you know you do have these emergent situations, but then you also have these urgent situations. And we'll just like not urgent, not emergent, but serious and a big deal, and we need to take care of this promptly. And you have to be able to kind of be the assertive nurse that's going to command respect um, and be able to navigate that, which can be kind of challenging, especially if you're a new grad. So highly recommend learning um, the skill of assertiveness. Next, lean into what's really hard and scary and conquer that as early on as possible. So, you know, I have a friend who, when he started out in ICU, he was very intimidated by ventilators and they are pretty complex. And what he decided to do was befriend one of the respiratory therapists um, that he heard also liked to teach, which so many people in healthcare do, and said, hey, I really wanna learn more about this. Can you tell me what you're doing and why and all that? And took the initiative to fill in that knowledge gap that made him nervous so that he could be really, um, really skilled in that area and you know and do I encourage you to do that find whatever makes you think about what makes you the most nervous is it talking to doctors is it this specific disease process is it this um, kind of situation or this equipment maybe it's um, neuro stuff in the ICU or maybe it's um, codes or whatever it might be Lean into that and conquer it during your precepting period where you've got someone with you who can, who's watching behind you to make sure no harm befalls any patients, but allowing you to learn and have that space to figure things out before you're out on your own, okay? There are going to be things that intimidate you, and I have seen a lot of people being onboarded into ICU who avoid the things that scare them, and it'll get them through that shift um, but it doesn't serve them in the long run because ultimately you're going to have to be responsible for those things at some point. And if you keep pushing off learning about it or avoiding it or trying to get someone else to do it or whatever that might be, um, you know, it's going to catch up with you. There's going to be a time when you can't do that or the lack of knowledge that you have in that area could actually result in harm for a patient. So while you have that safety net of a preceptor, I highly encourage you to dive deep into those areas and fill in those knowledge gaps with intention so that you can become this well-rounded ICU nurse that while this job is intimidating, if I walk into the unit and I know, hey, you know what, I took the things that scared me the most and leaned into them head on and I can navigate those with confidence, um, then, you know, this very intimidating job becomes much more doable because, you know, those things can be scary, but at least you know how to navigate them and you've taken, taken that head on. And that can really bring down the anxiety level for sure. Um, next, have realistic expectations for your development as an ICU nurse, okay? So a lot of people will get into ICU, maybe even as a new grad, and they think, all right, all I got to do, I got to just do what my preceptor tells me, show up, um, I'll be attentive, I'll do all the things they tell me, and I'll just get through orientation, it'll be fine. No. <sighs> That's not how that works. Um, learning how to be an ICU nurse is incredibly overwhelming. It's intimidating. And one of the reasons is it's such high stakes. You have patients who are dying. You have patients who are 
who who you are responsible for coding, for talking to the provider, for having end of life conversations and just all these really intense moments. And you are looked to as a leader on behalf of your patient in terms of that. So it's very um, complex and very skilled, you know, it's a, it is a highly skilled position and it takes time to really settle into that. So if you can have realistic expectations for your development, it will help you keep your morale high. I do not expect someone who is starting off in the ICU to know what they're doing after three weeks or four weeks, to be honest. <laughs> um, when I started in ICU in 2012, I had two years of experience working um, in cardiac med surge and step down. And I thought, all right, I mean, I've got this great experience. I had a great preceptor as a new grad and had, I was a, and I became a preceptor myself. I became a, um, a charge nurse, nurse and a mentor. I got this, boy. When I started in neuro ICU in 2012, I felt like a new grad all over again. While I knew how to start an IV, I knew how to drop a job hot tube, I knew how to do documentation, boy, learning those skills that come with being a successful ICU nurse made me feel like a new grad all over again. And that doesn't mean that something's wrong with you. That doesn't mean that you were not ready for this role. That's just the natural learning curve for this incredibly complex um, specialty, okay? So if you can have realistic expectations instead of being disappointed with yourself every shift, it makes such a big difference in your morale. And if you have good morale, and if you are um, focusing on improving each shift and not being perfect, perfect each shift, um, you are going to get so much more out of orientation. You're going to be in this better mindset to learn from your mistakes instead of being beat down by them over and over again. It's almost like the difference between being beaten down versus just slowly building and building and building. Yeah, I might have messed up, but you know what? I learned a little something. I learned a little something here. I didn't do it perfect, but I learned something here versus I can't believe I didn't know that. I can't believe you didn't do that right. I can't believe you messed that up. Those are two very different mindsets and if you can have one that is encouraging and kind to yourself you're gonna be in a much better headspace to learn and it is a very humbling environment to learn because I felt like orientation was just constantly being wrong <laughs> and doing things the slow way the wrong way the I don't know it's just it felt like orientation was being constantly corrected and and it wasn't because I'm this like a poorly prepared person it's like this is because this is so hard and there's so much you have to do correctly and with such little margin of error um, that it, it is very easy to get down on yourself so if you can be proactive about that and gauge that level of expectation accordingly um, it'll serve you in the long run and my last tip for new ICU nurses is to take time at home to learn and dive deeper into things like medication, mechanism of action, and disease processes and the patho involved with them. Um, do that at home so that when you're at the bedside, you are learning things that you can only learn when you're at work. Where this thing is, what's this called, what, how do I set this up, what's the step-by-step -step procedure for intrathecal thecal vancomycin or whatever it might be, or how do I suction this person? And then you can go home and learn about the medication or whatever it is. So let's say you have a patient. Actually, I'll give you a little story. I had a, um, a new grad in neuro ICU, and I was, I was actually very impressed with her. Granted, she's not perfect like anyone isn't, but she, she, boy, she focused on improvement and she had to give mannitol one day and was not familiar with it, but you know, we're not gonna not give the patient the mannitol until she reads stuff. No, we're gonna give the mannitol. But that night, she went home and read up a bunch on mannitol because she didn't have time to do it in that moment. Um, and she decided she wanted to learn more about it so that the next time she had to give it, she could chat with the patient more about it. Um, she could know what kind of things to anticipate. You know, oh, this is actually why we have to draw it up with either a filter needle or administer it through a filter set. Um, oh wait, this is why it's cloudy and we can't give it when it's cloudy. And this is the lab we have to watch closely when we give something like this. And 
this is what's happening at a cellular level and why the physician said we really need this medication like, I don't know, 10 minutes ago, hurry up and give it as fast as you can kind of thing. Because, you know, the situation we ran into where we needed mannitol is not uncommon in the ICU. She knew she was going to run into it again. So she took the time and initiative to say, okay, I'm going to go home. I'm going to check this out so that the next time I know what's going on. Because I also simultaneously like juxtapose that to the new grad who thinks, okay, the only thing I'm not, I'm just going to do it all at work. And there just, there isn't time. There isn't time to look things up and understand why you're doing what you're doing. You have to do it and learn why later. Um, and, and I've had people who they only want to learn things when they're clocked in. And I get that, but I also don't. Like there's so much that you have to learn. There's no way you're gonna do it all on the clock. And it's part of kind of professional development of learning, you know, the ins and outs of what you're doing. Um, and it's so helpful to go home where you're not at the hospital, have this like intense, you know, call lights going off and telemetry alarms going off and all these distractions where you can sit down and say, okay, this is, this is really what's going on with sepsis. And this is why norepinephrine was used and why vasopressin was added and why we had to do such big fluid resuscitation, like pulling those pieces in. And when you can do that at home and then when you're at the bedside and you're newer and you can recall some of that information, boy, you look snazzy. I'm just saying, if I've got a patient, I've got a, or if I've got a new nurse, and we're doing a sepsis protocol, and they understand why we've got to draw a lactate, that is awesome. Like, I know you might not have ever had a septic patient before, but if you're like, oh yeah, that I know that like drawing a lactate is part of this, and I know that we've got to do this monitoring, and we've got to watch this, and draw this ABG and whatnot. It just, it's great because you're taking ownership and accountability for your own development. And it's, and that just speaks so highly and certainly puts you ahead of the game. So if you can, anything that you can do for that also will decrease your anxiety in this incredibly intimidating environment. So I hope that helps us do a little, little refresher. Learn how to be assertive. Um, lean into what's scary and don't avoid it. Have a realistic expectations for your progress and learn the technical stuff at home. So I worked ICU for a while. I got my critical care certification. I now have my master's in nursing, but myself and another nurse who has her master's who is actually still actively working at the bedside in critical care and has her critical care certification, we put our heads together to create the ultimate resource for new ICU nurses and that is called Breakthrough ICU. It is a crash course for new ICU nurses. We have the, just the link to learn more about that in the description of this video. It comes with continuing education credits and we walk through assertiveness training and learning how to navigate those challenging relationships and building rapport. We walk through how to watch people be going through trauma and how to protect ourselves. We walk through the pathophysiology of the top disease processes you're going to run into and, the, and much, much more. And we do it in a way where we're trying to avoid information overload and we're not giving you every little piece of detail on every little thing, but really prioritizing the must-know information to save your brain space <laughs> and, and know that you can't learn every little thing about sepsis. What you can learn is the basics of the disease pet process, typical patient pathway, and your responsibilities of the bedside nurse. So if you want to learn more about that, again, link in the description. I also have more ICU resources that I will also link as well. So I hope this was helpful. So thanks nurses and stay fresh. <laughs>